Hello and welcome to Voice of Australia. I'm here with National Political Correspondent Steve Lewis to talk about the recriminations of the Australian Labor Party after Kevin Rudd's loss in the election. Hello Steve. Good day, John. Uh, now we saw Kevin Rudd uh, make a concession speech uh, last night. Let's have a look at that now. I have been honoured to serve as your Prime Minister and as your party's leader. But there comes a time when you know you've given it your all and a time for the party to further renew its leadership for the future. For me, that time is now. So I will not be re recontesting the leadership of the Parliamentary Labor Party. The Australian people, I believe, deserve a fresh start with our leadership. I know this will not be welcome news to some of you, but my responsibility has been to maintain Labor as a fighting force for the future so that we can unite behind the next leader of our party. Now, Steve, uh, he speaks about uh, the change of leadership there, but before we talk about that, uh, the ALP he wants to maintain as a fighting force. Uh, they did lose uh, quite a few seats uh, in the election. Uh, take us through uh, some of those and uh, how that's going to affect the Labor Party now. Yeah, well, look, they certainly uh, copped a, a big uh, election loss. Uh, there are some uh, big losses in, in New South Wales. Uh, they lost, uh, I think it'll be three seats in Victoria. Looks like they'll lose uh, three seats in uh, Tasmania. But um, the, the losses were perhaps not as bad as what some within the ALP uh, were fearing. Certainly uh, uh, last night, uh, earlier in the day during Saturday when it appeared that they, they could be you know, on track to lose 25 or 30 seats, it looks as though it won't be uh, quite, uh, quite as bad as that. And it does look as though uh, Labor will hold on to a, a number of seats in, uh, in Queensland and, and New South Wales, which uh, it thought it might lose. Uh, conversely, there's a number of seats that are absolutely line ball seats, like um, um, Barton in southern Sydney, which was held by uh, Robert McClellan, mm. the, the Labor MP who's retired. That looks as though it's absolutely neck and neck, and we won't know the outcome of that uh, for some time. So, you know, look, there's a number of seats that will take some time before they're, uh, they're finally decided. Some of the seats on the central coast, um, Dobell, looks as though it's going to go right down to the wire. And we won't know the, the results of that, perhaps, for, for several days. And we did see uh, some of the seats in, in Western Sydney, which we, we thought there would be a route yeah. um, there. But uh, I think Parramatta, there was a, a swing towards the Labor member. Um, so that wasn't as, as bad as, as we thought in that, in that regard? Yeah, look, they have lost, uh, they've lost seats like uh, Lindsay, David mm. Bradbury, uh, lost uh, the Liberals, Fiona Scott, will pick that up. Uh, seats like Banks, which has been held by Daryl Mel Darryl Mellon, the Labor's uh, uh, Daryl Mellon for, geez, you know, several decades. Daryl's lost that seat to uh, the, Liberal, the Liberal Party's uh, David Coleman. Yeah, but, but, but other seats um, uh, uh, that Labor thought were in trouble, mm. uh, they've held on to. And, mm. and importantly, people like Chris Bowen, Mm. The, uh, the Treasurer uh, under Kevin Rudd and, and Jason Clare, they've held on to their seats. Uh, Kate Ellis in, in Adelaide has, has held on to her seat. That was a seat that uh, we thought that uh, the Liberals could win. Mm -hmm. um, Adelaide, Kate Ellis, was, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, in Adelaide. So that's, a, that's another seat that's been held. Um, so, you know, like it's, it's perhaps not the unmitigated disaster that uh, many within Labor had earlier fear. Mm. Now, uh, the seat that they were worried we were going to lose was, was Kevin Rudd's seat of Griffith in Queensland. Yep. Yep. Um, he re retained that, um, but he's decided not to uh, recontest the leadership of the Labor Party, yep. and he's handed that over to Anthony Albanese. Uh, is Anthony ready for this? Is, is he wanting to take this over? Oh, well, I don't think it'll be Anthony Albanese who'll take over as leader. I mean, uh, Kevin Rudd has resigned the leadership but look to be honest there was um, already uh, even before the election result was known there were senior people within the ALP who were basically saying Kevin Rudd must stand aside from the mm. leadership uh, irrespective of what happened in his own particular seat because people knew that Labor's brand, uh, Labor's primary vote was uh, was uh, had taken a hammering and that uh, a key reason for that had been the, the leadership destabilisation of the past, what, three to four years. And so people were looking for a fresh start. So look, I think Kevin Rudd, by saying, I will not recontest the leadership, he probably saw the writing on the, on the wall and he was smart enough uh, as a political operator, as a, as a political fighter, he knew that basically he was uh, likely to get rolled anyway if he'd sought to uh, recontest the leadership. So it now appears that uh, Bill Shorten, um, uh, if he wants it, the leadership is basically his. 
uh, Bill Shorten from Victoria. He's mm. likely to take over as leader. But it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out uh, because under the party reforms, it may take a little while for the Labor Party to actually put the uh, mechanisms in place for the leader to be chosen. So remember that Kevin Rudd had said that it was going to be up to the, the party membership. That's uh, right, the 50-50. That's right, the 50-50. Right. Mm. So if that is the case, it might actually take some time before Labor can formally uh, anoint a new leader. So it might be that Anthony Albanese might continue in that role, uh, step up as a sort of acting leader mm. for, for some period of time.